Yeah, I think this is a great touch, the hot towel to the scalp before we start. And uh, let me tell you that I noticed my hair uh, have grown some baby hair on the area that I concern the most the past two weeks. I think this is week four or week five between the first treatment and the second treatment. This is going to be my second treatment today. Uh, I noticed some baby hair growing and I'm pretty happy about that. At the same time, I don't want to be super, um, you know, uh, hyper excited about the results yet. I think I think you bring up a good point because especially with treatments like this or mm. or or anything else where we require a series of treatments like Sculptra for the face and whatever we have a protocol. And mm. so if we're planning to do four sessions, well, let's just do the four sessions before we overanalyze the results. So it's true that a lot of people after just one session will notice little baby hair is growing, less hair is falling out. Maybe if they had dry scalp, they'll notice less dry scalp. Oftentimes when, we're, when we feel like we're starting to lose our hair, we get like oh, hyper vigilant and over fixated on the hair mm. and on the hair loss, right? Yeah. That might have been something you've experienced for the last while while you feel like your hair is, is thinning. Yes. So it's a good practice to just detach from all of that. Like let me let go of the hyper vigilance and the fixation and noticing every hair that falls out, right? From the first hand experience, I, I, I can say that you just have to really trust. Okay, you have to trust two things. One, you're gonna trust the doctor. And second, you're gonna trust yourself, have the ability to recover from it. And yeah. the third, you gotta just trust the process, something that's outside of your control. If you don't trust that, if you don't trust none of them, and it's gonna drive yourself crazy, and you're not, you know, realistically, you're not bringing anything on the table, you're not really making any progress anyway. It, so, might as well have some faith in, in the decision that you made. I think that's the point of your whole clinic here, right? It's yeah. like empowering people to really like believe in the process and be, be able to heal themselves, right? Correct. So yeah. here we go. Look at that guy. And we can see that little flash in there and then no, nothing's gonna happen here unless I'm really pulling on this because there's, no, um, there's no vacuum in this one. But if you're, if you're using a different system with those tubes, then there's a vacuum inside of the tube, so it just sucks the blood in. Mm. Here we have to do a lot of more, a lot more work. I just want a little pressure there. Perfect. Any air that's still in there with the platelets is going to make them start wanting to um, shape, change, and clot, right? So I always get like the air bubble right to like it's out. Anything that affects the platelet, and since there is no anticoagulant in here, like the process is starting right now of them being like outside of the body and kind of annoyed, right? I'm going to do the one by one needle like around the front so I can be a little bit more nitpicky and artistic. Okay. It's almost like we can look and see, um, you know, where hairs have been growing up here. So I'll put product all the way up into here. There's like these little tiny hairs here, right? So I'm trying to like mm -hmm. pull the hairline forward a little bit because I can see it probably used to be, you know? Right. There's been this huge uh, thought about it, about it being hormonal. And then I've seen a lot of research recently that that like what we see as like the hormonal cause of it is actually just a secondary effect of other stuff, you know? So maybe stress is doing something and then increasing the DHT and then we think it's DHT that's causing it, right? Maybe DHT is actually coming in to help fix the problem. Until relatively recently, right? We just thought after a hair fall fell out, the hair follicle must just be dead and gone. But actually, hair follicles are still there, and they're just in this state of dormancy. And that's the whole reason why PRP works so well, is the follicle is still there, and the stem cells at the base of it are still there. So even though the hair fell out, the follicle is not dead. So it's do you think dormant, that the, the, the right? DHC is trying to protect some something from furthering damaging? I do. The DHC blocker that they... 
they advocate it like um it has never really helped a lot of people uh, what's right? that what's that called like finasteride or uh the other one is um Minoxidil. Minoxidil. I mean, I tried both. Uh, I tried the, uh, the finasteride uh, locally. Local topicals seem to work, but the. But then it causes a lot of irritation, and there is still side effects because it still absorbs systemically, right? Yeah. And... I think there's so many people who have tried it, and either it didn't work, or it kind of worked, and they didn't like it. Yeah, let me tell you that I tried the oral uh, minoxidil. Mm, yeah. God, I never felt depressed in my life. That was the time that I felt really depressed, yep. and I didn't even know what, what happened. I've heard that from so many people. Mm -hmm. Again, just to go over this, I'm leaving one mil of product there on the top, so we're going to leave out all the white cells that might be contributing to the issue with excess inflam inflammation. Yeah. You ready? Okay, so one, two, three. I think everyone's so, so different. Some people think that the this hairline one is the most sensitive, and some people don't even notice anything. I mean, I can only see the front part of it, the middle part, I took a picture and I tried to zoom in. I noticed um, there's some, a tiny bit of a volume increased in those regions. Okay, so now we're like the five by five one. So I've okay. gone all the way around the edge of it. I've gone into your part a little bit here too. So now I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna go with the next needle back here into the crown. Okay. Okay, okay one, two, three. I know, probably didn't feel yucky. So now we did this whole front part, and now I'm going to go back here into the crown. Okay. okay. And then, you're almost done with me. Now we have the mesotherapy. Okay. And I'll just apply that also with the five-prong needle, because we'll go in the body of the hair. There. And now, just for extra good measure, I have this hair serum. I think we used the same thing last time too. Mm. Um, this serum is, I don't, I don't know, you know, if I believe all the propaganda from all of these aesthetic medicine companies, sure. but I've looked at their research and it seems to make a lot of sense. So yeah. they, they figured out um, which cytokines are important in that milieu of like, we're upregulating new hair growth. So then they isolated those and they're in this serum, which is like stem cell and growth factor cytokine mix. Even if it helps just half as much as they say, right? Yeah. It'd be good, better than nothing. So again, same as last time, no yeah. hair washed uh, today. Yeah. Uh, okay. And nothing should be painful as far as these guys are concerned because there's no anticoagulant in there. It's just the, just your platelets, your body. Yeah. But if you did happen to have some pain, maybe just even from the needles or something. Yeah. Probably Tylenol is going to be better than Advil or aspirin just because we want to still keep the platelets as happy as possible. Okay. There you are. We are talking about you being nitpicky and checking every single day to see if there's new baby hairs growing. Yes, I have been. Checking my hair. <laughs> not the marijuana chemical. Right. You have to act tough for the camera, huh? Okay. Yeah. And you're not trying to up, up, upsell your own thing? No. <laughs> I'm not, actually. Oh my gosh, my girlfriend was running her fingers through my hair and she noticed baby hairs. PRP process taught me how to be zen. Yeah, really. And guys might be like, meh. Is there a treatment for, for that? Why, why, why guys don't listen? Okay. That was easy. That's not a tear. No, don't, don't, I don't know. I think just. I think I'm just like allergies. Uh, Someone give me some Clarolin.